All right. Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night, 11.07 p.m. California time here. February 8th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows uh, looks like some movement there across northern California. 2.6 and a 2.5. Uh, showing up there on the red and the green flag. Looks like a little bit of adjustment going on here across the southern end of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area there in northern California. A couple of the latest quakes there on the map. Uh, jumping in here to the Cayman Islands area where we uh, had the uh, largest earthquake so far this year with a 7.6 earthquake. And in fact, in fact there, this is the largest earthquake uh, in this area specifically along this uh, boundary here south of the west cayman ridge outside of georgetown here cayman islands i went back uh in terms of what the usgs has here in terms of historical data and today's quake the largest so that's uh that's something that's saying something right there uh, back in 2018 a 7.5 struck the same area now a uh, lot of activity uh, has been ramping up here across the Middle America Trench recently. If we go back here and look at the last 30 days of earthquake activity, uh, the Caribbean plate gets a lot of the strain from the Middle America Trench area, not to mention the South America region and uh, what goes on up here across the North American plate as well. Uh, but if we look at the last 30 days of activity, um, a pretty decent swarm down here across the Middle America Trench with quite a few fours, including the 5.6. Uh, and if we were to go back the last couple months here, strain has been elevated out here across the Middle America Trench. A lot of earthquake activity. Ultimately, that strain will transfer over here to the Caribbean Plate. Notice the two arrows here, the Middle America Trench, Caribbean Plate getting shoved and bullied around uh, by not only the Middle America Trench area, that's the Cocos Plate, but also South America Plate here moving at the northwestward direction. And uh, just... It, you know, look kind of looks like uh, things were leading up to some activity out there, but I uh, wasn't expecting that big of an earthquake. That, uh, no doubt, is a, uh, a pretty large earthquake. A little bit of migration here across the plate boundary. Don't think there's anything uh, larger that we're going to see here out here uh, out in the area right now. Uh, this earthquake originally coming in as an, uh, it's, it's an odd deal. Came in as a 6.7. Uh, then it got upgraded to a 8.0, and it set that it set like that for a little while. Then it got downgraded to a 6.7, and then ultimately adjusted there to a 7.6. So a little bit of bouncing around, a little bit of confusion. There was a small tsunami observed out there, but for the most part, I think we dodged a bullet uh, in terms of any major tsunami. It is on a strike-slip boundary out here. Uh, subduction zone really not in this area but it was a large enough earthquake to displace a little bit of water uh, and create a small tsunami across uh, I think it was up here around the Cayman Ridge area so some aftershock activity occurring following that 7.6 4.8 and a couple other fours in there as well spread across the plate boundary uh, the EMSC let's see if they're showing anything specifically in this area it looks like roughly about the same a uh, multitude of quakes there. But uh, no, nonetheless, that is the largest earthquake so far this year. 7.6. I thought for sure that it was going to stick at it at an 8-pointer. You know, uh, I was actually somewhat excited. Uh, not, you know, not in the sense of any damage or anything, but that uh, we finally got to see the 8-pointer out here that uh, we're expecting. And I say that because we're supposed to have an 8-pointer out here on any given year across the globe, if not every year, every other year. And it's been since 2021, since our last eight pointer out here around the planet. So uh, no doubt that will uh, come up here soon. It has to, I don't, I don't see it uh, lingering um, too much longer. No further adjustment here across the region far as any unusual strain. A lot of times when we see these big earthquakes, it will apply pressure or strain across a different area of the plate boundary or fault systems nearby. I am not seeing that at the moment, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Pretty decent sized earthquake for sure. 
All right, uh, looking at the states, nothing major going on across the Texas area or Oklahoma. Those are all oil fields out there getting hit uh, with some earthquakes. No changes out there across the eastern portion of the country. Yellowstone, nothing showing up, but I guarantee you uh, that seismograph station there, let's see what that seven-pointer looked like on the Yellowstone area. Um, there's at least one of them showing up there on Maple Creek. That's a 7.6 down there in uh, the Cayman Islands area showing up on Yellowstone. Uh, not for sure what happened to the rest of them. Moose Creek, Idaho picking them up as well. Uh, looks like maybe some of these may be offline. Or uh, there it is. Uh, the UTC time has been displaced, so it looks like we're on the, the next day as uh, far as the maps go for the uh, mountain time. But there's 7.6 showing up quite nicely. No effect there to Yellowstone. Sometimes these vibrational frequencies, you know, we may not be able to film, but at the same time, they do send off uh, movement and um, vibration across the planet. And they can trigger earthquake swarms thousands of miles away this has not affected yellowstone at all this is just that seven seven point six there all right pacific northwest relatively quiet nothing showing up there uh, aside from a couple of smaller quakes uh, let's double check the trimmer map here tonight see what we have for cascadia trimmer which consists of 221 epicenters of trimmer not volcanic trimmer this is a uh, slow slip events there that occurred in uh, pretty much every subduction zone mostly up there across the uh, vancouver island range right now but uh, no, nothing going on there across the cascadia for now that's probably a good thing we don't want to trigger that uh, san francisco pretty quiet aside from some uh, geothermal field operations up there around the clear lake volcanic field uh, man southern california has just been super quiet out here recently Really no unusual unrest, no uh, major earthquake activity, nothing of any minor activity. I mean, this is all general small microquake activity, so it's it's eerily quiet out here across the North American plate. Um, let's see what else we have out here across the globe. Of course, Santorini area, still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity, as noted here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's go ahead and check out uh, what's going on out here across the Santorini area. Got a listing of uh, 1,720 earthquakes out here. Uh, as far as the latest earthquake here, looks to be a 3.5. Still all over the place in terms of the depth of the earthquakes out here. Some deeper ones, some shallow ones. This is all indicative here of magma building underneath the area. It is stretching over here towards the Santorini area. That's something we have to watch pretty closely. And I want to show you guys here the... Um, Let's go over here to the uh, GPS map. Not GPS for driving conditions, but GPS for uh, monitoring, you know, direction of the plates in volcanoes here. Now, one of these is working. This is the area here that um, even on the Volcano Discovery website, they were showing a graph here that showed elevated inflation going on here across the eastern side of the caldera and a little bit here across the center cone of santorini volcano now if you look here these are going to be in two-year increments right so 2022 to 2024 um 2025 it's roughly going to be right here at this mark right right where we're seeing inflation go up that is vertical displacement there something that we haven't seen uh recently this right here now if we go back 2012 that looks like some type of instrument adjustment um but this is a uh, vertical displacement going on across the area of santorini uh volcano eastern side of that caldera the, you know the crater area um, so that's something that uh, is concerning because a lot of a lot of uh, I don't I don't even know you know seismologists geologists uh, the people in charge out there are stating that this is just purely plate tectonics you know just earthquakes don't worry about them 
But this is uh, something that's not to be taken lightly at a significant potential for a volcanic eruption there across, you know, Santorini Volcano. The eruption back there in uh, 1600 BCE uh, was one of the largest ever in human history. So this has potential uh, to produce, you know, who knows what, similar eruption. That would alter the climate here across the globe. In fact, it was recorded out there through several um, written records across, you know, different countries that there was a yellow haze throughout the uh, the year and uh, pretty much a, a summer that had frost. So it's pretty much a, a year without summer. So it can alter the climate when we get these big, huge eruptions. <clears throat> this is the seismograph station out there in the last 24 hours. Notice uh, it's still, uh, still able to see a, a few lines out here. So it looks like right now there's a little... A little quiet period going on here for a couple hours. Uh, that was one, two, three, four, probably earlier in the day, but it looks like things are starting to kick back up here now in terms of the multitude of quakes. Now, even though these are not drastically altering the looks of the seismograph signatures, they're still earthquakes nonetheless, and there's definitely a number of them kicking up, kicking up there. Uh, according to the USGS, the last um, 4.3 was a couple hours ago here in that cluster. But notice this migration down here, folks. This is getting more and more prominent in terms of directional migration towards this area. And that's probably not the best thing. I'm not too familiar with the direct area of the magma chamber underneath this region, but it can't be good to see swelling out here, a lot of, a lot of earthquake activity, and uh, ultimately leading up towards a... Uh, a volcano that historically has been explosive so we're watching it continue to keep an eye on it folks that's basically all we can do right now on the live seismograph stations or at least on the uh, my live stream here I, I do have a live seismograph station monitoring the activity when it does come in for the most part the uh, upper threes mid threes maybe will come in and it will be visible some of these smaller quakes not necessarily um, visible out there but Migration, right? That's an eye opener, and it's pretty obvious here that we're drifting down closer to this area. Some of these earthquakes there in the four range. In fact, I think, yeah, that's where that 5.3 struck a um, few days ago. Got to watch that. All right, we'll report back on that uh, sometime tomorrow, unless something major happens overnight, but uh, you never know. 2.8 coming in right now to that area. Um, let's see. I'm going to adjust that just a little bit because we've got so much earthquake activity happening around here in certain spots. Uh, South America, pretty quiet. A couple of smaller earthquakes out there. Um, really nothing major going on here across the rest of the planet. Japan area, a couple of smaller quakes, but really, uh, nothing of any major concern right now. You know, it's, uh, we got some stuff brewing out here. Waiting on that eight pointer. The question is uh, when and where. I thought I, I was almost certain that was going to be it today, but it wasn't. A lot of downgrading going on. And looking at the signature there on the Yellowstone graphs, uh, with this being in somewhat geologically close proximity, right? I, I know Yellowstone to the Cayman Islands, that's a pretty good distance for me and you. But uh, geologically speaking, it's still that's pretty close. North American plate. And the Caribbean plate boundary, it's its right there. So that looks like a, a mid-seven to me. If this was an eight-pointer, if I thought this was an eight-pointer, oh, it, it would be blasting all of these seismograph stations and a much stronger signature. So I, I firmly believe that that was a, um, a 7.6. All right, as far as any uh, space weather activity, well, say goodbye to... Uh, 3981 and its cluster of friends out there on the western limb i had my hopes up a little bit for this but it seems like when i get my hopes up things start to die down in terms of uh you know flaring activity and solar flare uh cmes so this area degrading out of sight out of mind and we're going to be left with pretty much a uh a very weak earth-facing side 
uh, of sunspots out here. Really not seeing anything that's going to be uh, noteworthy out here for now. Right now, these guys showing a 20% chance, but I'm going to drop my flare threat level for that. Uh, I just don't see it happening. After this area is departed off the western limb, we're looking at very minimal conditions. No major roars in the forecast. We have had a CME or a, uh, uh, excuse me, it's a chrono hole. It's been a long day. Chrono hole that's been facing us there, number 13, for a couple days. That high-speed solar wind stream is... Uh, Coming, maybe, tomorrow night here. Got uh, G1 storming conditions possible. Now, not always do um, things kick up this drastically when we get high-speed solar wind stream from a coronal hole, but we'll see what happens, right? Uh, let's see, space or our storm prediction center. Nothing major going on. Things look pretty quiet there across the board. Uh, California taking a break. Got a lot of yard work done today. Had to get it because we've just been odd with the weather this year here in California. Had a lot of rain back in December. Barely a drop of rain in January. So that whole January month allowed everything to grow because of the sunshine. And then we got a bunch more rain. <coughs> and now it's just a swamp out there. But I had to get everything, at least try to get caught up here on the uh, grass around this region. The field likes to grow these bull thistles and if I don't get a hold of them, uh, they can be nasty in the summertime. Got a decent precipitation maker here for the west coast as we head towards uh, middle and uh, the, uh, to, well, Thursday. Looks like Thursday of this coming week. Uh, decent. That includes Southern California down there as well. So that's a major winter storm set to impact the west coast. After that, um, well, I guess we'll have to see here. You know, it's a little ways out. These models can change in a blink of an eye. Uh, some more snow out there across areas of the country here, east of the Rockies. <coughs> Central Plains northward. But uh, aside from that, um, we'll keep an eye here on the seismograph stations. One little spike there showing up on Petrolia. Coincidentally, at the same time as a little spike there on Yellowstone. Hmm. Let's see here. Looks like it is coming in. A uh, 1.7. Things have kicked up here out of the blue. And whether that has any relationship to the uh, earthquake out here or not, that's, you know, questionable. But got to remember, the world's big to us, right? But when plates move around, it, it, there's only a number of plates out here. One large plate could ultimately... Uh, adjust down here across New Zealand and cause a huge increase in pressure across this region up north or vice versa. I mean, it's just when these plates move around, we have to watch for obvious signs of elevated uptick um, because it's not just going to it's not going to affect the area just local. It can, but uh, it seems like it has an effect on the place as a whole when we see these larger earthquakes. So I don't know if this is a result of that seven pointer down there, but we'll keep an eye on it because it was quiet beforehand and then all of a sudden things started kicking up here. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening. We'll keep an eye on things out here. I am going to bed. I'm pretty tired, so we'll catch you guys out here in the morning for the Sunday morning update. Take care, folks. Make sure you guys subscribe while you're here. Got uh, Actually got quite a few new subscribers here in the last couple days uh, probably about a thousand or more so we appreciate you guys coming on board and uh welcome make sure you guys give a like here to the video we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow sometime